Teaching Games for Understanding model, most commonly known by its acronym TGFU, is perhaps the best known game-centered approach. In this video, I want to look at the basic elements of the model. The history of TGFU stretches back some 40 years. At that time, there were some growing concerns with the molecular approach to teaching. Professor David Kirk argues that what characterizes this traditional approach is its focus on defining skills as techniques, and the belief that players needed to be taught in a direct way using drills isolated from the game. It is very much a cognitivist approach to learning. The concerns about this approach can be summarized in the following way. Firstly, the teaching methods were very inflexible and not really student-centered. Because of this, and the emphasis on performance, students experienced very little success in their games. Due to practice being isolated from the games, players also knew very little of the strategies and concept of the games, which meant that students had poor decision-making abilities and were very dependent on their coach or the teacher to make the decisions during the games. In response to these concerns, in the late 1960s, Wade proposed using small-sided games for the purpose of teaching technical and tactical skills. His idea was to use the minimum number of players possible to sustain a competitive game. This idea of using small-sided, modified games has since become a key feature of the TGFU model and the game-centered approach. At the same time, Molden and Redfern proposed an alternative approach based on three key ideas. Firstly, Games of a similar nature could be grouped together so that teaching for conceptual and skill transfer between similar games could occur. Secondly, players should analyze the game in order to develop an appreciation and understanding of the game. And thirdly, learning should be based around structured situations for players ex to experiment and problem solve. This proposal suggested grouping games into three categories, net games, batting games, and running games. The purpose of the game classification was to assist the process of a game analysis and the development of game appreciation. It would also assist teaching for skill and knowledge transfer between games. The idea that games could be grouped together into different categories is another feature of the TGFU model and the game-centered approach. Over time, there have been different game categories suggested by different people. In the early 1980s, two academics at Loughborough University proposed that when teaching games, children could first develop an appreciation for the tactical structure of the game before teaching the technical aspects of the game. Their proposal, the Teaching Games for Understanding model, continued the evolution of the small-sided games approach and promoted the idea that students learn best if they understood what to do before they actually understood how to do it. The basic premise of TGFU is simple. Teach kids games by playing games. With TGFU, students not only understand what they need to know to be successful in games, but perhaps more importantly, when and why to make certain decisions in game dynamic game contexts. The TGFU model is built around three key features. One, a set of four guiding pedagogical principles. Two, a six-step cycle that started with students playing a game modified to their ability level. And three, games grouped into four categories. The guiding principles are what give TGFU its distinctive nature. The principles are, firstly, sampling, which means using a range of games from within each game category to help develop an understanding of the rules and strategies that are common within each category. Secondly, representation, using small-sided modified games that are appropriate to the age and or ability of the players. Thirdly, exaggeration, using modifications to games such as rules, equipment and playing space to be able to emphasize a particular aspect of the game. And fourthly, questioning, using questions rather than instructions to prompt student thinking and problem solving so that an understanding of what to do, when to do it, and why to do it develops. This can also lead to the question of how to perform movement in the context of the play. These principles then guide how the model is organized into a six step cyclical process. These steps are, firstly, the game, Learning begins with playing the game. This is perhaps the most important step and involves selecting a game that all students can play. 
Learners don't need to play the adult version of the game. The aim is to match the game with the abilities of the students. Use modified and small-sided games. Second step then is game appreciation. As students begin to play the game, they also learn about the nature of the game. At this stage, draw attention to the aim of the game, how points are scored, as well as what the playing boundaries and rules are. Remember that games are shaped by their rules, so understanding these provides the structure within, within which strategy and tactics can be applied. Tactical awareness. An appreciation of the game soon evolves into an awareness of the different tactical options that are available. The key thing here is to focus students' attention on good play that is effective in solving the problems they encounter in playing the game. This can be as simple as asking students, why did that work, when something good happens. This leads into the next step, making appropriate decisions. At this step, students begin to focus on the elements involved in good decision making during game situations. These elements include being able to read the play, knowing what information to attend to, anticipating possible actions and reactions, and choosing what to do next. Help students with each of these elements. Stop play in situations to help them read what is happening and see options. Slow down play so they have time to make the decisions rather than simply react and repeat play so that they can, they can explore and reflect on their decision making. The next step is skill execution. At this point students will have an understanding of the type of actions needed to enhance their gameplay and support their decision making. Specific practices can then be devised that help exaggerate aspects of the game and develop specific skills. Students' attention can be focused on refining movement patterns and techniques linked to improving playing performance. The last stage is game performance. This final stage is to decide what next. This involves assessing students' performance in game play and deciding how the game should be modified or changed in order to support the students' learning. This may involve shifting to a more advanced form of the game being played or change to a new game from within the game category to provide new game context for the skills uh, to be performed. The final aspect of the model is the four game categories or themes. These are identified as target games. Target games are game forms in which players send an object such as a ball or a dart towards a target area. Sometimes this may also invo uh, involve avoiding obstacles. Netwall games. Netwall games are a game form in which players send an object, either a ball or a shuttle, over a net or against the wall so that it lands in an area that an opponent is trying to defend. The aim is to make it difficult for the opponent to return the object or force them into a mistake. Then we have striking games. Striking and fielding games are game forms in which one team can score points when a player strikes a ball or a similar object and runs to a designated playing area while the other team attempts to retrieve the ball and return it to prevent the, op the opponents from scoring. Then we finally have invasion games. An invasion game is a form of game where the aim is to invade the opponent's territory and score a goal or a point. These games are typically fast paced and need a lot of teamwork in order to control the ball, keep possession, moving into a scoring position and preventing the opposition from scoring. Teams share the same playing area as they attempt to both score and prevent the other team from scoring. Each category covers games that have a similar structure. By exposing students to the primary rules, fundamental skills and tactical problems associated with the games in each category, students become able to participate in a variety of games. The key point here is that when you're using the TGFU model, you should understand the key tactical problems of each category and then design games focusing students' decision making and skill development on solving those tactical problems. Research has suggested that students who are taught using the TGFU model result in children who are creative, motivated, successful and enjoy playing a broad range of games. By adopting an I can approach, students take part in games that are appropriate for their current skill level. 
Once they have developed a better understanding of the basic elements of the game, students are better prepared and motivated to invest the time and energy necessary to enhance their technical skills. In summary, TGFU changes the emphasis from focusing on factors such as technical skill to a focus on understanding the nature and inherent technical problems of a game. The nature of the technical problems and the unique features of each game category will be covered in the future.